Hi, everybody. Welcome to Supply Side Fresh. I'm Amy Summers, your host for the next two hours. And I'm really excited to have David Sandler, not Adam Sandler, we couldn't get him this morning, but David Sandler next um, from Safety Shot. And I have my shot right here. This is my Safety Shot. It has water <laughs> in it, just in case I need it. Um, and Diana Morgan, who everybody knows, she is the VP Queen of Nutribolt. I told her her title was too long, yeah. so <laughs> we're just gonna call you Queen. Um, and she's also the founder of What's Up with Sups. And David, you're on the board of What's Up with the Sups. And Correct. I hear you guys have a pretty rocking party happening um, on Thursday night. What's the theme? What's the theme? So the theme is retro toys. So think uh, like adult toy story. So uh, we'll have like a Lego wall, life-size Lego characters. We'll have a Rubik's Cube solving competition that's sponsored by Kaiwa Hako. Um, there will be people in so many different costumes. And it's 5 to 11 uh, on Thursday as a show closer. And where is it going to be at? It is at House of Blues. OK. And people can still get tickets if they're people here and they're like on the fence. Yeah, so we actually have um, our info booth, which is right across from the um, the food court, right by the Informa booth. So people okay. can buy tickets there. They can pre-check in so they can skip the line. And okay. um, yeah, we're, so it's we're accessible. still selling tickets. You yes. can still get in. Yep. Um, and then I know that you two have been working on this community for, it's been three years, am, am I right? It's been about three years now yeah. since you started. And um, so how, how is the community growing? What's changing, David? Well, what we're seeing is uh, people really want to get help um, and they don't know where to start. And so when Diana and I collaborated on how we might be able to bring this to the, to the masses, uh, we thought the What's Up With Up platform was perfect because you've got so many mentors there and then there are so many new people always coming in that have created a great opportunity to become uh, a mentee as we call them. So you just mentioned something that you know, there's some people that may not be in your community yet, maybe they will be soon, but you mentioned um, this new program. So you're, I understand that you're going to start a mentor a mentee program in the What's Up With What's Up community. And it's so new, it's not on their website, but it's going live later today, right, yes, Diana? Yes, yeah, so we, we have, named it. Now you gotta push the button. <laughs> yeah, so it's the SUP Successor Program, and you know, David and I have really strong um, core values about helping others and just, you know, not really having that, that ego, and we wanna just share our knowledge. So everything will be up on the website later. We have piloted it um, through email. We've sent it out to our email list already. We've sent it out with Whole Foods Magazine. So. We have sent it out, um, but it will be officially live uh, later today. So in the meantime, you're just curious, you wanna get like a preview tease on it, head on over to Instagram at What's Up With Sups and follow. Um, you'll learn about the mentorship program. You'll also get to see all the cool pics from the party this week, I'm sure, and videos. But I wanna back up a little bit, because we are talking about mentorship, and we're talking about Supply Side Fresh, and this is a new program that Supply Side is bringing as well. It has to do with mentors. But I'm just curious, how did this come about? Because I think most people know What's Up With Sups as just a really cool, fun dress-up party, and you go and have you know fun with your friends, and then that's it. So where did this idea about, hey, let's start mentoring people. Are you mentoring people to party, or do they need mentorship <laughs> in other areas? Both. OK. <laughs> you want to take it? Yeah, um, so I, could, I could start off, um, but uh, as what, you know, I was saying before, David and I really have the same values in terms of mentorship. Um, when you when you get your first really good mentor, you get it. You understand, you know, that someone is putting their effort into you, and it's not ego driven. They're there to really just like develop you, and not to make them shine or anything, but just really like to um, help you grow. And I always go back to the story because it's really powerful for me. You know, I was you know several years ago, I got the blessing of getting a really awesome boss who became a, a really awesome mentor and it was at that time where you know I was at a, a stage in my career where I shouldn't be going to like five thousand dollar conferences it, it was just too young in my career but she gave me the opportunity she said you know it's uh, my time has passed now it's your time and I want to show you everything that I know so uh, you can grow as a person and you know just seeing potential in other people um, and I'll, I'll let David get to it because he also has that strong passion well David you know and that's a great story to show how somebody mentored you, Diana. And look how great you are. I mean, like, I mean, that's how powerful mentorship 
is, can you think, David, of a time that, I mean, you've done so many, so much work in this industry. I'm sure that you have had some mentees. Are there some people that you've intentionally taken on your wing? Because a lot of people might ask, I don't really know how to become a mentor. You know, like they may be just waiting around for someone to ask them for help, which they may not do. So how do you, if you're more seasoned in your career, how do you start that relationship? Can you give an example of maybe something, somebody you took under your wing? Yeah, well, we, we've already had a few people in the program, uh, okay. informally and uh, formally as well. Um, and really the, the thing is, is, is if you're looking for mentorship, you have to ask, right? Mm -hmm. And not be afraid to reach out. And so, of course, that's what our platform is for, so that people can feel comfortable reaching out and then we can pair them up. And so then the game plan is to kind of put the right people together. Um, for folks like myself who have been doing this for so long, I had many different mentors, and that's what sort of contributed to this idea of saying, okay, let's get mentors that are really good in certain areas, mm -hmm. and then ask people who want mentorship what are they looking for specifically? So if they're looking for something in R&D or compliance or regulatory or marketing or sales or manufacturing or distribution, and we can go on and on, that's what we're here for at Supply Side, so this is a great place for people to come and, and get that experience. So it sounds to me like you're, um, it's kind of like a dating app for mentorship a little bit. It is. How will, how will it work, Diana? So somebody goes to your website, they enter in, is there like a drop down where they can pick specific things that they're looking to get mentored in? Because there's all kinds of people in this industry from marketing to scientists. I mean, how are you? Yeah, so um, it, it definitely is like a mentor match program. And um, you know, I was I was saying before, you know, in addition to the uh, the technical skills that someone wants to learn, like if it's regulatory or quality or marketing, we have a whole questionnaire that also is. Um, kind of like a Myers-Briggs where you're getting to know the person as well because say you have someone that's really great at marketing but you know they have a certain personality right and you know personalities um, you know really jive with each other and that's what we want to do is you know we want to have the mentorship program and you know say like I only want like a woman for some reason that I, you know, I feel more comfortable with having a woman mentor, right? So those are, that's like one of the questions. Um, you know, then we all talk, talk about like, what are your hobbies? What are things that you like to do, like outside of your day job? And that's really going to help us get a sense of who you are as a person. And, you know, um, like David does all this crazy stuff. Like he skateboards and like <laughs> he videos himself like, like on a pogo stick. And, you know, so having someone that is is like of the same mentality will make them really get along really well but the other part is the feedback loop um, so we want to just keep checking in with the mentees and this is you know not the men not necessarily the mentor checking in with the mentee but you know like the uh, the sub successor program to see how that's going and then you know we can have that feedback loop and see if we need to reconnect them um, or you know um, you know work on different things in the program so does your program, does it cost money? Um, is it free? How does it work? Yeah, I'll let David speak. It's absolutely free and actually everybody involved in it as a mentor is there because of their love for trying to give back and to help, right? So it's kind of our way of saying, you know, after all the years that we've been in the industry, you know, thank you to the industry and let's reach out and help some people. And our, our mentors have anywhere from just a few, five, six, five or six years of experience in the industry to folks like myself with over 30 years of uh, industry experience. And so again, like Diana said, we compare them up, but all the mentors have agreed to give a certain amount of their free time. Mm -hmm. And then it's really on the mentee to make sure they can work within that framework that's given to them. Some of the mentees will come out, but you know, I've had uh, people fly out uh, and hang out for a few days at my lab, uh, see the manufacturing process. Okay. So. That's kind of how it, that's kind of how it and works. And then go but skateboarding with you and later. And then go skateboarding with me later. <laughs> exactly. So okay, so it's free. They just need to sign up. You're matching them up. Um, you say that you've already piloted this a little bit. So can you give me an example of a mentor mentee situation that has been successful? Yeah, well, just recently, uh, a gentleman came over to visit me at the lab in Dallas. So I work out of a manufacturing mm -hmm. facility with a lab. Uh, day one, very timid, didn't really know what to do, was just kind of watching. And by the end of the time, he was there for, uh, say, four days, 
by the last day, he was asking everybody at the manufacturing, can I, can I follow you around? Can I see what you're doing? Put on a hairnet, put on the smock, get all their stuff out. And he was out there, you know, bailing supplements into a, uh, you know, into a blender. And so, uh, yeah, that was very successful because he still, he wants to come back and do it again. And uh, that's exactly what we try to encourage. That's awesome. How many people are in, are in the What's Up with Sups community currently, Diana, since you started? There's a lot. So, you know, we have our, our SUP squad, which is the board. And we have, I think, about like 15 people on the board. And those are the ones that are really like the, um, the operational people that are, you know, helping create the events and doing all that stuff. But then we have like, um, I would say our SUPS ambassadors, people that come to every single event. And, you know, those are really the ones that we cherish because they're the ones that um, will also come to us and like, well, I want to be a mentor. So we have a list of about 20 people right now that are in the queue for just being mentors. And this is what David was saying before, these people are ranging from CEOs of multi-million dollar companies to consultants to um, content creators. So if anyone even wants to be a content creator, we have really well-known content creators in our industry that um, are offered to, to mentor some of the mentors. So, what's, so you've, you've already got incoming requests. Yes. Is it more heavy on people that want to be mentors or more on people that want to be the mentee? It's, I think it's split. about, yeah, it's, it's a good, good split. split. Oh, it's yeah. a good split already. Yeah, and, and we nice. do have uh, criteria for mentors, so everybody just can't be one. And, and again, the big thing is it's uh, it's all about the mentee. Right? Okay. Not about not about ourselves. So, we do this out of our love. So what is the criteria to be a mentor? Well, obviously having a certain set number of years of experience. Okay. And that varies because, say, something like content creation hasn't been around for 30 years. Right, so we're not expecting to find someone like that as a mentor kind of thing, and so yeah, we work through sort of a, um, a guideline that we've created at this point, and it's still it's a bit of a moving target. Mm -hmm. But then the biggest thing is that sort of that unconditional desire to give back to the community, and so we we see those people right away. We know who they are, and, yeah, and how they can help us. So a certain amount of years, and it varies by industry, and is that just up to your discretion a little bit on how you're picking it, or is it part of the form that you're filling yeah, out? Yeah, so it really depends on the, the function, as David was saying. So okay. someone like regulatory, you really, to do regulatory or quality or something that's very um, you know, focused on knowing the technical aspects, that's, you know, that's something that we're gonna want at least like 10 years, because that's something, it's super important, right? Mm -hmm. Regulatory, I mean, that's what I do for a living, um, super important, but then when you get into content creation, that's more, it, that's not really taught in school, right? Um, you know, but when you're looking at some of these really great content creators like Price Plow or Josh Shaw, you know, those mm -hmm. guys, um, you, we could see that talent and that's something that is um, just organic. Okay. And, you know, it's, it's really not a numbers game. So we're just looking at it um, depending upon, you know, how good they are at what they do pretty much. Great. And then... For the mentees, is there any requirement? You know, I think a lot of people think that mentees need to be young. Could it be somebody that's coming into this industry later in life, or is there any criteria on being a mentee? We actually get uh, everyone from some, you know, from from people doing their postdocs okay. to uh, to people who are just very, very brand new. Uh, as far as age goes, it's it's really not the requirement. And some people are looking also to either change their career or enhance their career. And so, yeah, I've got, uh, you know, 10 years of experience here, but I really want to learn R&D or product formulation or something like that. Mm -hmm. They have the opportunity to come back in and, uh, and be a mentee, just like, you know, for that purpose. Is there an area in the industry that you're really feeling like, we need more mentors? Because there's so many different areas. Yeah, well, uh, the way product development is going now, I'm going to speak from that for because this is what I've been doing for, for 30 years. You end up becoming a very much into a bit of a niche, and I, and I think that we really need an expansion in that. Okay. Um, but looking at it from the global perspective of what product development is, not just the formula. And so, uh, especially with beverages and the stuff that's really hot in the marketplace today. Well, you guys heard it from David and Diana. Um, if you're looking for mentorship or you're looking to be mentored, check out What's Up With Sups. Um, they have this new mentorship program and um, check them out at their party on Thursday night too. So thank you both for coming in this morning and kicking us off. Well, thank you, Amy, and thank you, Supply Side and Informa. This is fantastic. <laughs> this is awesome.
Yeah, this is such a great show. You did a great job, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing what's on next on Fresh. Yes, thank you guys. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Hi everybody, welcome back to Supply Side Fresh. I'm Amy Summers, I'm founder of Pitch Publicity and Anisi Box, and I am also your host here at Supply Side Live for the next two hours. And Yasmin has joined me on stage. Yasmin, um, she is a PhD with Chromadex, and she has a very lovely last name that I'm gonna let you say so I don't yes. screw it up. No problem, <laughs> so I am Yasmin in Chroma Ellie and I'm the Global Director for External Research at Chromadex. Thank you so much for coming, and I should have known your name because I did take my NAD Plus this morning. Yes, yes, Trinaya I am Jen. taking it every morning, Trinaya Jen. So I was so excited to interview you because I, I told my mom, like, I hope that she brings some Trinaya Jen for me to take back home to New York. We will work on getting you some. <laughs> yes. It is great. Um, but, you know, we're not here to talk about Trinaya Jen today. We are here to talk about your internship program at Chromadex. Yes. I'm really excited to hear about this. Um, I understand that it, it kind of got started around the pandemic time. You want to tell me what prompted Chromadex to start an internship program? Sure, absolutely. So this is one of the things that came out from the times at that period. So we were looking at diversity, we were looking at equity, we were looking at inclusion, we were looking at the pipeline. And the question came, how do we get more diversity into the pipeline? So some of us that were really passionate said we should do an internship program. Mm -hmm. And when I was younger, I was an intern. I started my first internship when I was in high school. And I was actually working at the time at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. And it really opened up my eyes to different types of opportunities. Um, and then all throughout college, I did internships every summer. And so I knew that that was a way to introduce the industry to a lot of people. We needed great candidates. We want great candidates in the industry as well. And it's a black box for many. I mean, there's no program that I know of where you major in dietary supplements, right? right. And so having that introduction to see how this is actually a little bit different, um, the great opportunities, how we need great scientists and engineers in the space, this was a way for us to start to create that pipeline for ourselves, but for the entire industry as well. Well, stepping back a little bit, because you did mention the diversity thing, yes. and I think this is really smart of Chromadex to be doing this, because um, I've been talking to a lot of professionals in this industry about this for a while, and I'm just curious how you stumbled across the natural products industry. Um, how did you find it? For me, it actually started when I was doing some of my PhD work, mm -hmm. and so though I was studying toxicology, I was looking at ways that breast cancer was initiated, but my advisor said we shouldn't just look at the problem in toxicology, we should look at solutions. And so we looked at garlic organosulfide compounds, so compounds that are in garlic, and how they could be effective in reducing the initiation of cancer. And from there, I just got excited about nutrition. So okay. when I did my postdoc work at Oregon State University, I looked and did um, two postdocs in one, don't do that, um, <laughs> in nutrition and toxicology and started looking at zinc compounds and looking at supplementation. And so I started to see a passion there. Mm -hmm. um, moved on to University of Colorado and though I was working on clinical metabolomics there, which is looking at all the compounds in the body, um, had an opportunity to also say, how do we look at food compounds? Okay. And what does that mean? And how does that change when you take one food from another and what do those signatures look like? So for me, I started to create this path for myself. And once I was in academia, I didn't quite know how to get into industry. Um, it was this box. And so what I was doing in academia didn't quite apply with the same language. So I actually had to learn the language of industry so that I would have that opportunity to move into industry. And then once I did, um, Chromadex loved me. I loved Chromadex, and it's been a beautiful relationship so ever Chromadex since. So Chromadex is your first ex job experience. Yes, here. outside okay. of academia. And yes. you're still with them. So I things still, are going yes. great. <laughs> things are going phenomenal. Chromadex is Good. awesome. Yes. Good. It and so, okay, so that's the background. So then, are you in charge of this internship program? Do they say you're in charge? I am not in charge. You're not in charge. <laughs> <laughs> no, which is great though, because I, I do a lot of different things. Okay. But um, I was one of the one of the many people that it was our idea, okay. and we developed and we started to shape it. Our human resource team was the ones that really implemented. And then we had interns, and we wanted to make sure we had interns in-house. 
when we first started the program. And so they had the opportunity to work in quality and to work in R&D and to get experience with the instrumentation. And during COVID, we know that that was a little bit of a challenge, right? Um, but we wanted to make sure they had that hands-on experience because they weren't getting it because everybody was online. Right. So we, we made that decision. We want to bring them you in. brought them in. Yes. So now how... Where is Chromadex located? Yes. First of all, where are you located? We're located actually in three locations. Okay. We have two locations in California, one in Tustin, and then one um, in Westwood, which is outside of LA. Okay. And then our laboratories are actually in Colorado, in Longmont, Colorado. Okay. So then how do you find the interns? Where do you go? Because that's the biggest question a lot of people have for me. I yes. run an internship program with my company too, and people are always like, where do you find the interns? Yes. So what, how do you recruit students? They're students, yes, right? Absolutely. Okay, into your internship program. Um, so we put out, you know, very similar to jobs, we, you know, we put out our, our job information mm -hmm. for the opportunity, and then we reached out to some of the local colleges. Um, but we also shared it nationally, and so we had different students that were coming from different schools, even outside of Colorado, that okay. just wanted that opportunity because there were so many internships at the time that you couldn't get hands-on experience. Right. So we started to build relationships with several different universities. They spread the word for us, and then we, we looked at a wonderful pool of candidates. We were looking for individuals that were high quality, great grades, great recommendations from their professors that were interested in the industry and really wanted a unique type of experience. And so have you found that, you know, you, you mentioned various ways to find them. Has there been one strategy that has worked better? Has it been having the relationships with the colleges and knowing the professors, or has it just kind of been blindly putting those leads out there that you have an internship open? I think it's a mixture of both. Okay. So initially my focus was let's focus on Colorado. Let's get individuals mm -hmm. that are underserved in Colorado for this program. Um, but it turned out that though we started to build that relationship in Colorado, there were other opportunities at other institutions where they said, we want this for our students too. So it's been a part of us building these types of relationships, okay. connecting, and not specifically just with the professors, but with whole programs. And so we know that there's this desire in this country to develop equity. Mm -hmm. And so we were very excited that all of our three first interns were all women. Okay. Um, and they came from diverse backgrounds and they came from all over the country, but it was very exciting to see this. And so we are now building more relationships with academic institutions. Um, additionally, like the program that I do run, <laughs> not our internship program, uh, we have researchers that are all over the world, and okay. they are doing academic research on our compound, um, on nicotinamide riboside, which is in the true niagen. Okay. And so we have over 280 um, different studies that are going on with that. So we're building relationships with those institutions as well to give opportunities to their students. Okay. So about how many um, students do you have in your internship program right now? Right. So this year, we're getting ready to get started so that we can plan for our summer okay. for next year. Um, and so we're bringing in about three at a time. Okay. Um, and so we had two actually that started in the summer and then schedules kind of, you know, got a little wonky. So then they were able to continue. Um, but one of the exciting things about this is we have to make sure that the company recognizes the importance and relevance of this all the time. So it's a funding requirement. Um, and so we have to make sure we continue to get the funding in for the students. How do you, how do you tell your, your, how do you emphasize to your company that this is important? Because on one hand, it's like, oh my gosh, we're going to have to train all these students and we're putting all this energy into this. So what is the benefit of having an internship program if you're just kind of exploring the idea? Well, one aspect of it is that you're actually going to get really quality candidates. So we all know now when people are putting out jobs on LinkedIn and other spaces, you might get two, three, four hundred candidates, right, okay. for that opportunity. But you want quality candidates. You want people who are really passionate about what you do that understand. And so by having this internship program, we are creating that pipeline for us as well as others in the industry. Um, again, it's kind of a black box. What happens in dietary supplements? No one seems to come in and know there's so many different areas, there's so many different opportunities. And even for scientists, there's the science aspect, but there's also the technology. There might be analytical, regulatory, quality. There's many different opportunities. And so you're giving these students an opportunity to see, you know, where do I lean? Mm -hmm. What do I like? And, and for our program as well, we had focused projects, but the interns also got to meet with different divisions in different areas. Okay. So they got to see what are some of the other options out there for me as well. And so all these students, they're in person, 
at Chromadex, no one's doing it remotely, because I know a lot of people are doing internships remotely now too. Yeah. So when we first started, that was the focus. I think we're going to start to move towards having some remote options as well okay. for positions that actually don't actually have to be in person. So okay. for my position and what we do, there's pop, you know there's opportunities there. There's some other opportunities like for regulatory, which is another area where we definitely need more quality candidates. Mm -hmm. And now that you've done it for a few years, are some of these, do the students stay with you semester after semester, or do they kind of just come in one semester and leave, or have you been developing the talent for Chromadex? So from our, our first pool, our first three, which is really exciting, so it was just for the summer or that one semester, um, but we actually have one candidate that we are very close to hiring. So we're oh, very, cool. very excited about yes. that. Um, and what she did with us was not something she had even thought about doing, had no idea that this was even an option. And so it was okay. very exciting to see that we can open up this opportunity for her and we also are getting a great, great candidate. Yeah, I mean, she's already trained and ready to yeah, go. Yeah, she's ready. She's been onboarded. She knows she's what's going really on. She's been onboarded. <laughs> yes. So, yes, so some of those benefits is that you're getting quality, you know, candidates. You're getting to really develop the talent. Would there be any other persuasive ways to get your company to start a program like this so that they can see it's not just benefiting the students, it's also benefiting the companies or anything else that stands out to you? Yes, we're getting the brilliance of these students and they're coming in with fresh new ideas they're coming in with innovation so we're learning just as much from them as they, we are putting out and teaching to them mm -hmm. as well so they're bringing in you know try this or this is something different or how do we integrate the science with the marketing or you know these are some different opportunities I am not on TikTok, but you know I was excited to <laughs> learn more about yes. that and how that's a marketing option yeah and so they're bringing in that freshness that we need and sometimes you really want that out of the box thinking yes. so we have to just remind everyone, we you want these hitting, fresh ideas. You are hitting on a really important point, Yasmin, because I have found the same thing too, and that's one of the things I always tell people is the benefit is that you know you bring up diversity. I mean, di it's diversity of thought and ideas Absolutely, too. And yes. so there, I love working with students because you are constantly learning new things. Yes. You have to stay on your toes. And I think it makes you, I think it makes the, the people that are more seasoned in their career keeps you on your game. Oh, too. yes. Oh, yeah. It keeps us young. Are you on TikTok? <laughs> so I'm not there yet. Okay. <laughs> but I did get on Instagram. So I made it just, you oh, know. You did. So I did go on Instagram. I'm okay. learning more there. Okay. And um, it's exciting. Yeah. It's exciting. Yes. Well, this is really great to hear about all the good things Chromadex is doing. Thank you. Um, not only for your team, but really for the industry because yes. they're introducing the natural products industry to a whole nother generation of people that, you know, let's face it, our industry does not a good job of going to college fairs and career shows. Maybe we should be doing that too. But I think that that's why they don't know about us. They know about pharma, but right. they're not as familiar with this industry. So thank you for being a leader thank you. in this area. Yes. And if somebody out there is watching and is like, I want to be an intern for Chromonix, like how do they how do they do that? How do they get in touch? So I would say they can reach out to us. Um, they can reach out to our human resources department. We have our website, okay. chromadex.com. Um, we haven't started advertising our internships for next year, but we probably will at the beginning of the year, as long as we get all of our funding in line. Um, and we'll continue to grow our program. All right, so you guys heard it here first. I mean, it's not even published. So Yasmin says, um, go ahead and get a jump on it. If you're interested in internship at Chromadex, um, check them out, reach out, Absolutely. be proactive. Be proactive, yes, yes. That part. that's a yes. good mentor yes. tip. Yes. Just don't <laughs> wait for the, the, the official ad to come out, just be proactive. Well, thank yes. you so much for no coming yes. and um, sharing this with us. And um, I hope to see you around the show. I'm sure oh, I will. Yeah. I'm so I excited mean, to be so here. Fabulous. I'm not going to miss you. you. <laughs> thank you. This is my first time at Supply Side West. Oh, so yeah. we didn't super, get super questions. excited. But um, I didn't yes. realize it was your first time because you're <laughs> acting like a pro. Thank you. This is so much fun. So very excited to be here and as a scientist it's a little well, different enjoy it. pace Thank yourself you. yes. that's my advice pace lots myself. of water okay <laughs> stay out of the casinos right. that's not a problem for me all right thank you all so right. much thank you. <laughs> hi everybody welcome back i'm amy summers your host of supply side fresh uh we are talking to some people that are here for the very first time like daniela weckering 
Welcome, Daniela. Thank you very much for having me. And Osana, right? Is the company name you're yes. with? Yes. I'm here with Ultisana. Ultisana. A nutraceutical distributor. Okay. So how long has Ultisana been around? So Ultisana, the company, has been around for almost uh, three decades now. Okay. And we're focused in Central America and the Caribbean. I joined the company a little over a year ago now from um, my career in biotech. And I am actually working on launching the American branch of okay. Ultisana. Um, the company focuses on merging allopathic and um, naturopathic medicines because that's our founder's passion. And uh, now we're trying to um, introduce our products to the US, our proprietary formulations, and we're really looking forward to entering this really big market. It is a big market. Yes. And this is your first time at Supply Side. It is, yeah. So uh, did you just get here or were you here yesterday? We or? got here yesterday. Okay. We had a few trouble getting our badge, but it worked itself out very quickly. And okay. I mean, everybody here is super nice. Are you, so. you have a booth here? No, nope. not yet. Walking, we'll get there at some walking. point. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right now we're just meeting with manufacturers, with ingredient suppliers. Okay. So, um, what is your first product. impression so far? Uh, I mean, the amount of work that must have gone into this is pretty crazy, but it's impressive in the way that it's executed, and I'm really happy to be here. Does it excite you or does it intimidate you? <laughs> both, <Okay>. for sure. <laughs> a bit of both. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about Altisana. You say, is, is it a family business? So yeah, um, the company was started by my parents, actually, around the time I was born. I'm the last child of six children in a first-generation American family that's culturally very blended. Um, we come from a family that has a legacy in healthcare. Both my grandparents, both my grandfathers, from both sides worked in healthcare, one as a pharmacist, the other as um, an MD facilitating nutrition for poor countries of the Caribbean. So my siblings and I are now trying to grow this legacy and expand our parents' company, um, which is where I come in <laughs> as um, the facilitator for the US market. Um, and yeah. Nice, so what has it been like coming into the U.S. market? Is it, what are some of the, let's start with the challenges. What are, what have some of the challenges that you've encountered? I would say that the U.S. market is very saturated. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of competition. Um, so that would kind of be the core challenge that influences the other smaller obstacles mm -hmm. that I've, I've found. Um, additionally, the regulations, they're very broad so that they can cover all of the um, industries that they do cover, like the FDA, the FTC regulations. And that, um, I think, also makes it a little bit nuanced in how to follow those regulations. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it takes a lot of work and a lot of patience, I think, to really understand the best path for, your, for my business, I would say, and how to introduce our products in a compliant way and, and um, be competitive in this market. What are some tools that are helping you do that, that you that you found have been really useful? Like, are there certain tools or services yeah. that you're using? Um, I actually had to kind of just meet with a bunch of different consultants um, and, you know, on an introductory basis to learn more about what it is that I need to focus on um, in coming in this market. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, I really love what Supply Side does with all of their resources. Not only that, um, all the magazines, the Nutrition Business Review, the I think there's a Nutrition Business Journal. There's uh, there's a lot of different um, organizations. So you read out there. a lot of the magazines, and that yeah. are those really valuable. Yeah, and then they okay. also give reports mm -hmm. um, that you can purchase, and those are also very helpful. Okay, and and how did you in your research? You know, you said you had to meet with consultants. How did you find them, or how did you vet them, let's say? There's a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if I were to talk about specifically contract manufacturers mm -hmm. as a consultant, as like a branch of consulting, uh, there's almost 2,000 wow. in the States alone. And so it, it's, it's really like a game of 
choosing some options that meet a criteria and then building off of that and finding the ones that you have the best relationship with um, and also you know that you can ensure their quality and all of that so it's, it's really um, it's just meeting with everybody and finding the one that whose values you align with and who meet your criteria I think so you're looking at for criteria, but yes. also, are you looking for some kind of synergy then? Uh, yes, because being, a, you know, from a business that um, operates in Central America and the Caribbean, we highly value a face-to-face -face and a personal connection. Okay. That's how we do business. So having to come into the States um, and really, you know, it's a bit different here I think there's just a lot more people and things are done through zoom things are done through email so, um, so really finding that personal connection was very important um, yes but of so course. for you zoom meeting in person meeting in person you want to be in person all the way yeah so if somebody wants to work with you yeah. <laughs> they need to recognize that no. right well of course but yes. we also need to uh, adapt to the current right? market which we have very easily mm -hmm. but like um, I think for some people it's harder than others and luckily I, I you know I tech savvy so yes. <laughs> I can do the whole zoom thing very yes. well um, yeah, and it's, it's worked out well either way. It's mm -hmm. just, it was just an adjustment, I would say. Okay. Anything that surprised you that was easier than you thought it was going to be coming into the U.S. market? Um, <laughs> the regulations, I would say they're easier than I thought they okay. were going to be. Yeah. They're very complicated, but as soon as you understand kind of the overall gist of mm -hmm. those regulations, um, I think... It was an easier path to okay. actually, I was expecting to have to register products and go through a whole application because that's what we do in Central America. Okay. Uh, we get regulatory approval before actually selling products. Mm -hmm. But here it's a bit different. We just want to make sure that our, our products conform to, are compliant, I guess, and also um, that our manufacturing is, quali is of quality, of the highest quality possible. So, and... So you're here at the show, mm -hmm. and you like in person. <laughs> yes. So there's a lot of people here. Yes. What's your game plan? Like, um, I mean, it's the first time being at this show, so you're probably just first, you're probably a little yeah. overwhelmed. But yeah. what was your game plan coming in? So somebody is coming from out of country and coming to one of these shows for the very first time. Do you have some tips on, like, a game plan coming in? I really like to plan out my day. I'm a super organized person. Mm -hmm. So I just look at all the different exhibitions, for example, all the different conference talks. Um, and I look at all the exhibitors and I, I find ones that interest me. I reach out to them and I plan a meeting beforehand because okay. I have been to other conferences and it's quite difficult to just show up and get everything done. Mm -hmm. I like to have that meet time set up mm -hmm. beforehand. So do you have a lot of meetings lined up? I do. We have yes. today because uh, we came in yesterday and we're leaving tomorrow evening. So oh, wow. really it's like crunch time, you know? Okay. Yeah. And um, then how do you pick, so you're going to some of the education sessions too. Yes. Were there any ones this week that you're particularly interested in going to? Uh, very much so. Actually, I went to one uh, yesterday and about clinical trials mm -hmm. and um, I was surprised to find that it's very much about equity within clinical trials, mm -hmm. uh, especially gender equity. Yes. And I was honestly so pleasantly surprised to see that. Good. Um, and I also very much aligned with some of the speakers, having come from technical and scientific backgrounds. Because uh, like I said, I come from a biochemistry background. and. Mm -hmm. It, it was really, really inspiring. And that's, I think, why I like to go to those educational mm -hmm. um, talks, because they're always inspiring in one way or another. Yeah, because sometimes people just skip that. Yeah. And they're just on the trade show constantly, but you're yeah. making time for both. That's yeah. really good. It's, yeah. It and sounds very healthy. It sounds very <laughs> healthy, your, your trip planning. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Did I you try. make any reservations to eat? Uh, no, but we are going to Cirque du Soleil tonight. You are? Yes. Okay, well, really? you're even squeezing in some yeah, entertainment time. You can't time. not see, oh, like, it, it's in water. I have, have you seen it before? Never, but I, I have to see it. Yes. It's, a little, it's like a circus in water. Amazing. Yeah, that's Amazing. exciting. It's only in Las Vegas. 
So with your interviews, that, I mean, not interviews, your meetings that you have lined up, did you feel like people were really receptive to meet in advance, like when you reached out to them, or was it difficult to... No, it was very easy. Okay. In fact, people had reached out to me before okay. I came because I had been to uh, Natural Products Expo, Okay. and so I made some connections there. The first time I went there, it was very much just familiarizing. I think you have to come to these multiple times to really find your groove and really understand what the priorities are, whether it's education mm -hmm. or whether it's meeting with exhib exhibitors. And um, so are you using the online platform as yes. supply side a lot? Yes. And so we have a lot of people viewing that maybe joining us virtually for the conference. In what ways do you network on the online platform that have been really successful for you? Um, I would say the primary way I do so is to attend the educational talks okay. that are recorded mm -hmm. after the fact because there's so much to see and so much to do that sometimes you can't do everything. Um, and then reaching out to the organizers afterwards mm -hmm. if I have some, you know, some questions or inquiries. Um, I would say that that's like my biggest way of doing of doing the, the online, online is catching networking. the education you miss. Yes. And are you connecting with people online, yes. and are you finding that they're responsive there as well? Uh, yeah, very much so. Okay. First of all, the organizers are super responsive, super okay. helpful. Uh, but also the exhibitors, you mm -hmm. know, they um, they come here in the mind of, of I want to network, I want to meet more people, I want to understand how mm -hmm. I can help consumers. So they're very open to um, meeting with you and talking with you, even after the show or. Even if it's like months after the show, they're going to be like, oh, you were at Supply Side. Nice. So where are you at right now with, with your company? What stage are you at? And what can we expect to see from you next? Um, so we have been in the American branch starting the American expansion for about a year now. Okay. And um, patience is a virtue <laughs> in this process, but also consistency. Um, mm -hmm. And we're looking to launch officially launch within the next few months so okay. um, hopefully next time I come to a supply side I'll yes. have a product to show oh yeah um, sold in the US <laughs> I know I was emailing you can I have a logo yeah. for your company you're like okay uh, use this one <laughs> it's yes, not so done yet the brand story is super important in America and it's not uh, it's a little different than the markets than that we're used to so well, as we're wrapping up Share your brand story yeah. with us. What is the brand story? Um, so we were able to promote nutraceutical products in a market in Central America that isn't always as receptive as the US or Europe. And we'd sell directly to practitioners, uh, so doctors and pharmacists, who rave about our products. They come back with firsthand accounts of how in the positive impact that our company has had on their patients. And we really want to bring that to the States, um, bring that kind of sense of community. Mm -hmm. And we do a lot of outreach. We, within our company, we sell baby products at like the lowest possible profit margin. And we want to bring that community back to business. You know, that strong sense of community and bringing people together through our products, but also through the way that we uh, do our business, better business practices in general. So. And with the U.S. launch, will there be a laser focus on Hispanic community as well? Uh, for the first phase of it, yes, okay. because what better way to build trust than to do so with the people that you've been working with mm -hmm. and have a relationship with for the past 25 years. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, and kind of the big dream, the overall dream of this company is to uh, create affordable and accessible ways for people to uh, access health care. Because, I mean, one in six, six Hispanics in the U.S., uh, have faced cultural or language barriers when trying to access healthcare. So that's kind of why we decided to start. But really, you know, we're trying to be as inclusive as possible. Um, and at the end, I really want it to be like a whole health service rather than just a supplement brand. Well, this is really exciting. Welcome to Vegas. Welcome to Supply Thank Side. Thank you so much for having me. It's been me. so really nice to meet to you. Here. A fellow Floridian. Yes. Daniela and I are both from Florida. Yes. We found that out when we sat down. So. 
you know, when you're, you're meeting people, um, it's always that one thing you have in common with them and it just strikes up the conversation, right? Yes, the personal connections. So <laughs> thank you so much for coming. Um, what a great way to start your first show yeah. on stage. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. And I'm really looking forward to seeing all the exhibitors and seeing you all on and the And how, how can people get in touch with you? Um, so at the moment, we are still working on our website, but at some point... It LinkedIn. Will... LinkedIn. You can LinkedIn her. Yes. Yes, yes, exactly. That's Daniela what we did. Curry. We connected. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you so much. <laughs> and we'll be back with more interviews soon. This hard. I'm going to start my own company. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's a tough restaurant business. It's tough. Oh, right? 100%. Hi everybody, welcome back to Supply Side Fresh. I am Amy Summers, uh, president and founder of Pitch Publicity and Anisi Box. And we're fresh because we're talking to a lot of new fresh faces. Scott Zimmerman, Hi. kind of fresh. Yes. When well, your business, it's always good to be called fresh. Yes, 100%, a salad dressing Scott, yeah. Scott's a former chef, I just found out. Yeah. So I, I, now I'm very intrigued. Thank you. We're gonna talk food. Yes. And um, you're Founder of Lowly's or co-founder? Yes, or? I am the founder of founder, Lowly's. Founder, you are uh, it. Yes. All right. So, um, Lowly's. So, what, what is Lowly? Where do you get that name from? Lowly's is uh, the nickname for my grandmother. Okay. I made the brand in honor of my grandmother. I grew up, I grew up cooking with my grandmother. She had nine kids, so we were always in the kitchen. Um, she encouraged me to uh, pursue a culinary career, where I worked in Michelin-starred restaurants in New York, and then that, you know, at around that time, I got interested in gut health and wanted to make something that um, I didn't see on the shelf. Uh, I didn't want to take another supplement. I ran out of ways to um, eat sauerkraut and kimchi. I wanted something a little bit more delicious and functional because I knew probiotics needed uh, prebiotics, which is a fancy way of saying salads. Right. And so it's kind of a more delicious way uh, for um, gut health. And, so and I'm not a chef. Right. Just so you know. Okay. But I will say that what I eat like every single night is salad because that's what I can make. Right. So and that's where we wanted to be. We're going to get along great. Okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah, we have. <laughs> the dressing makes or breaks the salad. It can turn it into non-healthy immediately, immediately right? Immediately, yeah. <laughs> you could see a lot of dressings or a lot of dips. They have a lot of high sugars, a lot of high uh, salt, which was always funny to me. is like, why, if you're trying to eat a little healthier or lighter, why would you want those two components in there? Or a lot of them are really filled with um, gum, starches, uh, things that aren't really what you want okay. in, a, in a dressing or like something you make at home. All right, so let's back up a minute. Right. Okay, so first of all, would I know the name of the restaurants in New York? Because, you know, I live in New yeah, York. Yeah, so. um, I worked uh, for Mama Fuku Co. Oh, wow. Yeah, so okay. the David Chain Group. And okay. then, um, like I said, around that time, uh, after working and putting a lot of good time in there, I came back to California. No, wait a minute. Free. So you were working there. You, 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 yeah. You, Scott skated by this really fast. Sorry. He said you was working there. And then you got interested in gut health. Why did right. you get interested in gut health while you were a chef? Were they giving you like it was just something stomach aches? Every no, day at work? yeah, yeah, that's right. The stress <laughs> and the you know eighty hours a week. No, uh, it was what just what happened there that you were like, I'm out and I'm gonna go make dressings and dips. I've just always wanted to put you know when you start to um, when you're in a hurry and you're probably in a high stress environment or you're you're working hard. Uh, your diet tend to, tends to lack. Okay. And um, in that instance, you know, first thing to go, like you said, is sometimes salads or extra veggies on the mm -hmm. plate. And so uh, what always kind of fought that um, gut problem or that, you know, the, the stress in the gut is, and the low uh, immune health, digestive health, um, was just having more plants on the plate, whether it's like roasted veggies or salads or, um, or even making salad the main meal. Like you can have a very mm -hmm. hearty, uh, veggie salad with, you know, you can put protein on it if you really need to, right. um, and then it's still right there. And I always felt better and longer, uh, and lasted longer, obviously, in the week and, and the days uh, when I had a salad or um, just a heavy veggie meal, even if it was one at lunch and made it the main meal of the day or something like that. So, and then I would go, like I said, I would go to the, the store, look on the shelf, because I was in a hurry, mm -hmm. and um, wouldn't find something that I'd want to put on the salad or the greens. So even or like you're veggies. in Whole Foods and you're like, right. I can't find anything. Right, here. everything has gums. Really, uh, in Whole Foods? They and even Whole Foods. Here? Yeah, and, so, and half the stuff's non-organic. <laughs> okay. Um, half Is that the just because there's nothing available? There's just nothing uh, available, okay. um, and it's just, and it's not functional as well. It doesn't help you get a better immune health or digestive health. That's why we added the probiotics to it. Okay. And so it was just a nice way to um, 
make something that I just didn't see on the shelf that I, I wanted. And we and so we've created, um, and they're familiar flavors too. So Ranch we have, mm -hmm. we have a Caesar mm -hmm. and a Green Goddess was mm -hmm. our first three. And then we just launched our um, Lemon Vinaigrette, which is great as roasting veggies also in, and putting on avocado toast, putting it. So it's just very applicable to a lot of different times of the day to eat. And then we'll have, by the end of the year, we'll have a balsamic and a miso ginger, so. What's been the biggest challenge in making these dressings with all the, I oh, guess, clean yeah. ingredients, right? Right, that has been the most, so um, sticking to our principles to have clean ingredients okay. is hard because we don't use gums and starches. Um, so that means that we, we've looked for, um, you know, partners to work with to help manufacture, but we found at the end of the day that the best way to do that is just make it ourselves. And so wow. that's where we've come to, we make it ourselves, we source all the ingredients, why we're, which is why we're at Supply Side. Okay. Um, and, you know, because so that you brought the manufacturing in-house. Correct. Because you couldn't find anyone else to do it the Correct. right way? Correct. And it, um, and that's just how the industry is set up in, in the mm -hmm. sauces and dips. I mean, you could look around on the shelf, everything's made with gums and starches and fillers that is, um, really devaluing the customer because it's not real ingredients that you're getting, it's it's kind of filler. Sometimes products can have up to um, 40, 60% of mm -hmm. fillers when what you really yeah, want is- this is a very clean ingredient list. Right, I mean, that's- I mean, yeah. <laughs> I can pronounce all of those words. And that's what we like to say, it's, it's um, it, everything on the ingredient label is my five-year-old niece can pronounce, yes, you know? That, so. She's the tester for that, Yeah, exactly. Right? And that's our best compliment. We're, so, okay, but yeah. I'm curious. So you, you go to these manufacturers right. and you're like, here's how we want to make this low right. base. And this is like, what I have in mind. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah we're not, we're going to be doing it this way. Right. And so you, you just, as an entrepreneur, found yourself going into manufacturing. Yes. So where where do you do that in Grandma's kitchen? Do you like we, you knock start? It out? Yeah, you're right. You start in because <laughs> like, you're only doing you know small small batches. Mm -hmm. So you obviously start in a small kitchen, and then you're getting up to like an industrial kitchen, what I'm okay. used to, and okay. you know, obviously as a chef, and then you start looking at. Oh, I need to go a little faster, so I need, you know, just like in the kitchen, I need um, a Vitamix or I need a, something that is obviously okay. bigger, and you, you just scale piece by piece, and you're just, you're just growing. Because I was wondering why you were here. Yeah. I'm like, we're doing food? Right, exactly. And so you're looking for, it. so what are you looking for at Supply Side? So here? we're looking at, for unique ingredients okay. that you, um, for example, we're looking at um, to expand into different products like dips uh, that are different flavors, like a chipotle dip or a blue cheese in the future, mm -hmm. or perhaps in condiments like mayos and stuff like that. So that requires, um, so all to keep- All clean label. All clean label. So that that's where we're looking at ingredients. We're also looking at co-packers if they are out there. Um, but I think we'll be all in-house manufacturing. And then the other uh, reason that we're here is just um, to look at packaging and also if there's any other options as far as the probiotics, because there's a lot of great okay. uh, probiotics companies that are here right. and making sure that they um, are the right strains that we uh, have clinically proven strains that actually get to your large intestine through your stomach and large intestine and actually cultivate the gut okay. and actually give you that immune health, digest health and gut health. So, so you... You, this is your first Supply Side West. Correct. But you've been to other conferences in the industry? Have you been yes. to Expo West? I've been to Expo West. East? Okay, so, yeah. so walking into this, is it what you were expecting? Yes, I mean, there's a heavily, the one, um, there's a heavily supplements and beauty side okay. of things. But uh, for the most part, it's it's just like any show. Everybody, you have your vendors, and you have you, have, mm -hmm. you get to talk to them and see where you can work with them and where you can, and you're talking to different suppliers and and uh, building those relationships and finding second suppliers if you need to and, and just making um, your supply chain just more strong and, do you and reliable. Think, do you think this is something that you will now just be part of your business, that you are manufacturing your own product? Or yes. do you think that you'll ever be able to outsource it? I don't think we'll ever be able to outsource. I think we really enjoy manufacturing it, um, just like I really enjoy being in the kitchen and, and cooking and, and scaling. And then um, we just have that, uh, we have that transparency that we feel is really important because we know what goes into it and we're responsible for it. And then we are, um, I feel like when we are manufacturing, we're closer to the customer and we're closer to the ability to um, be closer to the customer's needs and wants mm -hmm. and, and build off of that into future products or whatever they might like. Yeah. Now what we don't have in common is right. I don't cook and you cook. But, well, that's why we made the dressings as well. Yes, so, cause if but you're what in a hurry, we do yeah. have in common, which uh -huh. you may not even realize right. this, but oh, we also don't have in common. Scott lives on the West Coast, I live on the East Coast. Right. 
but we have something called Naturally Network in common. Right. Because I'm on the board for Naturally New York, uh -huh. and you're involved with Naturally San, San Diego. Diego. Yes. And I'm just, you know, these are kind of new networks we have in our industry to kind of help people find. Oh, they've been amazing. Find. Yeah. So can you speak a little bit to how has Naturally San Diego and Naturally Network helped you kind of find the right people and connect to the oh, right? Oh, 100 I can't speak. I can't speak more better things about them. They, um, it's really funny. Uh, Kirsten Riley at Naturally San Diego has been amazing for us. They've been the best network to be a part of. Uh, I get, guess to give you a good example is since we launched two and a half years ago, we kind of went through and launched during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And Naturally San Diego um, and the Naturally Network, they put on uh, obviously um, little events uh, to get together and obviously form cohesion and then since we self manufacture they put all the manufacturers together and it was just a it was really kind of hearing all their stories especially during the pandemic what's going wrong what's going right how do you maneuver here how do you maneuver there to get through it and it was it was almost it was just therapeutic to hear I was that say, yeah therapeutic because you know you go on LinkedIn and yes. it looks like everyone is crushing it and yes. you are the only one that is running into problems. Yeah, that's a, that's a normal feeling as an entrepreneur. Because yeah, no yeah, one's yeah. going to post anything on LinkedIn because they are investors. Like, right. they're not going to say, I had a horrible day and we made a batch in Grandma's Kitchen and it was terrible. Right, like, or we no had to throw that, that out or, yes. yeah, example, yeah. This so, thing. yeah, I think the network's good because you're getting real Oh, 100%. Real feedback, meeting real people that are uh, either in your shoes or, you know, as a young company, they're above, they're above you and you can see them how they're operating. And like how they made it. Like they made inspiring. it. Yeah. Or they're, you know, you're going to be there hopefully in a year or two and you can see how they're handling it and or what their problems are and they're sharing. And then you're like, okay, I'm going to look out for that roadblock or I'm going to look so out for that. You got involved with the MO program within Naturally Network or? Yes. The MO program is, apologies, is the the, um, the fellowship, there's a like yes. some kind of fellowship yeah, program? Yeah, the fellowship, so we got in with them. Um, How was that helpful? That, oh, well, allowed me to get to the Supply Side West, okay. and, and they've been kind enough to... Because um, they're sponsoring you here? Yes, they are. Okay. Yeah, and that's been a huge so help, where, especially. Are you have a booth or something? We're just with the Naturally Network. They're hosting us, okay. and then so we have like a little micro you know, cut out of a in that a booth within a booth Yeah, yes. for them. And then, so and then check out community. Naturally Network because you might be around yes. there. Yeah. And then, I mean... What are you looking for here at the show? Who, who do you want to contact? We're looking for probiotics companies, like I mentioned. Okay. We're looking for um, some unique ingredients that we're talking about. Um, looking into uh, chickpeas and aquafaba, okay. which is in a lot of vegan mayos. Um, we're looking at um, some kelp or kombu, which is just helps with, with uh, shelf life and taste. And, and then we're also... Um, just looking for better, reliable sourced ingredients that, that we already have. Are you looking for a publicist? Yeah, I would, that would be right here. I mean, <laughs> if I, I'll get the business card after the after the interview. <laughs> All right. So, how can people get in touch with you? What is the best way? I know you're on LinkedIn. Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. Okay. Um, my inbox is busy, so you know, please just send. Uh, follow them on Instagram. Follow us on you Instagram. You have recipes and stuff. Yes, there. we do have a recipe page, and then uh, we're at eatlolies.com yes. or at eatlolies. At Lolies on on Instagram, right. so follow there. And then my email Scott at eatlolies, pretty easy, um, dot com. I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for oh, well, coming. Thanks for having us. And yeah. welcome to Supply Side. Well, thanks for and having us. And I hope us. you find all the probiotic and ingredients that you're looking for. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thanks, thank Amy. you. Stick with us. We have a couple more really exciting interviews coming up, and we'll see you soon. The batch Hi, thing. everybody. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Amy Summers, I'm founder and president of Pitch Football Studio and Nisi Box, also your host for Supply Side Fresh. And um, no, we are not on The Bachelor, <laughs> but Tyshawn Bryan is here. You, we could be on The Black Bachelor. We could it, be. It's golden bachelor time right now, so 100%. It, it's not green bachelor time. Okay, okay. We should pitch them, though, and be like, The Green Bachelor. Green works, doesn't are it? Are you a bachelor? I'm not a bachelor. Well, then this would not work. But you're right. You're right. Okay. So we'll scrap that <laughs> idea, right? That was the only flaw in the plan. So Tyshawn Bryant, he is founder and CEO in the everything of Green Regimen. Um, what's Green Regimen? Wow. Well. Let's we'll start there. Let's we'll start there. So Green Regimen is a health and fitness company, plant-based, that um, we just make certified organic and non-GMO products for optimal health. Uh, we focus on plant-based protein products, and we're also going to be releasing some new Optimal Health products as well, so stay tuned. So, Tyshawn and I met virtually 
kind of. Well, we were connected through the Naturally Network, and this is interesting because I just had Scott up here, so we were talking about Naturally Network, but right. you're with Naturally LA. Absolutely. I'm with Naturally New York, and when I was doing my Elephant in the Room sexism series, um, I reached out to Katrina Tolentino at Naturally Network. I'm like, I need some people on my panels to talk about sexism in the industry. And she said, call Tyshawn. <laughs> He'll do it, of I, course. Absolutely. I didn't know you. Oh, you, did, you didn't know me. But I have to give you credit. So I, 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 I connected to you on LinkedIn and told you I wanted you to be on a sexism seminar series. Which and he ignored me at first. Because oh. <laughs> he was you, like, you get so many messages from people. You have no idea who they are. Like, this is a trap. <laughs> <laughs> but I have, to, I have to hand it to you. You're, we got on the phone. You're really brave. You were on. Mm. You did awesome and amazing. It won you. an award. So now you've been on an award winning Inisi Vox program. Wow. Did you know about that? I was not aware of that. So you can add that to your resume. I definitely will. And so this is the first time we actually get to do this in person. Mm. And I'm very excited, by the way. Yeah. So, okay. So is this your first supply side? This what? is my very first, and most important, because it is my first thus far, supply side, yes. Yeah. What is your first impression? I think it's an unbelievable experience. I mean, if you're in the consumer packaged goods space or sports nutrition like myself, like this is the, this is the origin of your product. I mean, it's all about ingredients and the cutting edge technology. So I'm extremely thankful and happy to be here for sure. So you have these plant-based green drinks and... Am I saying it wrong? So they <laughs> <laughs> so, so specifically what they are okay. is they are a complete protein meal replacement shake, plant-based. Okay. So hemp protein, pea protein, mixed with some spirulina and some maca, some All chia right. seeds. So. so I'm going to call you out on this because there's a lot of green drinks and mixes. Sure. And so what makes yours special? You mean besides the fact that I created it? Besides that. Okay, okay. <laughs> So most times when people drink plant-based shakes or mm -hmm. probably even eat plant-based foods, the taste just isn't that pleasing. Well, one thing is... It doesn't even sound taste. good. It doesn't even sound... <laughs> and you say green drinks, are probably like, ugh. <laughs> okay. But it tastes delicious, okay. right? And it's a complete protein. It has okay. 25 grams of hemp and pea protein. So it's, it's phenomenal, actually. And I know I'm just saying how great it is, but when people taste it, they tell me, wow, this is really great. How did you do this? So what were you doing before Green Regimen? Well, so for the last 23 years, I've been a nutritionist and personal trainer. Okay. And, uh, but I never, ever expected to have a plant-based protein company. Ever, ever. I just thought I would just, you know, continue you know, making meal plans and training people. But, okay. you know, life kind of tosses you into direction sometimes. Yeah, so. if, you, if you follow him on Instagram at Green Regimen. At Green Regimen. And you go all the way to the beginning of the Instagram beginning of did Green Regiment. Yeah, I did. Wow. I did, some, I did wow. my research. Unbelievable. He's doing exercises. So you want some free training tips. Absolutely. You have to go down the feed a of lot. Of course, of course. But they're there. They're there. Yeah. You didn't erase them. I like that. Not at all. No, no. It shows the whole history of Tyshawn. The entire. So, okay. So you're doing your thing. You're counseling people on not to eat, how to train. Why, what prompted this? Well, some years back, my mm -hmm. mom had cancer. Mm -hmm. So after speaking with her, I said, you know, let me speak to your doctors because I'm sure that they can answer some of these questions that I have. Because, you know, if you have ever had a loved one who has any sort of illness, especially cancer, mm -hmm. you're just terrified. Mm -hmm. And then after speaking to her doctors, I realized that I had more questions than answers. So I didn't like that feeling, very uncomfortable feeling. I felt helpless almost, actually. So. I decided to just do my own research and I came upon plant-based nutrition maybe being the way to help her. So I decided, you know what, let me start making her green smoothies because they're fortified in antioxidants and something miraculous pretty much happened. I was giving her these green smoothies for two months. She slowly started to regain her health, but within four months, she dropped 50 pounds and she's been cancer free ever since. Oh my goodness. So this so. whole company that you started was just to revive your mom oh absolutely i wouldn't have done this without my mom okay sure. well then yeah. that explains why you have pictures of your mom on your website oh yeah she's my most favorite person in the world that's amazing absolutely. and she still drinks them now I oh guess. she most definitely did yeah okay. absolutely yeah she so you're like this worked for mom she dropped 50 pounds she's cancer free i gotta share this with the universe i absolutely have to share the success that i had with my mom with the world 
Absolutely. So when you were making them, I mean, what there wasn't anything else on the market, or that wow. you could have just grabbed a shake and like. I have to tell you, you're, you're, this, you, th that's a great question, you know? So there were a lot of plant-based proteins on the market. Okay. But when I was making her green smoothies, I realized that green smoothies are fortified with micronutrients, but they don't have macronutrients such okay. as protein, carbohydrates, and fats. So I started adding in some of the plant-based proteins, and those shakes are still on the market right now. I added them into her green smoothies, and they made her shakes taste like dirt. It's horrible. So I said to myself, okay, I know I can do better. Let me use my personal training and my nutritionist knowledge and let me come up with a formulation that is really palatable. So you're a scientist too. I, I got help. You know, I <laughs> talked to some formulators okay. and yeah, you can't do everything by yourself. All you know? right. Um, but yeah, came upon Elite Protein and it's been a hit so far. I have to be honest, okay. it's, it's delicious. Yeah. Okay, so how long has the company been around? So this product has been around since 2017. Okay. And we're growing and growing. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Pretty That's fantastic. impressive. So you're at the show. Now you came in with um, the Naturally Group. They, yes. You're one of their cohorts that yes. they're sponsoring in. Absolutely. Um, do you have a booth or how does that work? No, so the way it works is and very, very thankful for Naturally inviting me here. It's just been a phenomenal mm -hmm. experience. So Naturally does have a booth. But I'm walking around speaking because what my customers are asking for is they're asking for more optimal products. Okay. So I want to deliver. So I'm here talking to different ingredient suppliers because if I'm going to go anywhere to any expo on the planet, it's going to be this expo. So I get a chance to speak to the, the actual source of the ingredients because that's really what I care about. I want to make sure our customers are given the highest quality nutrition. Mm -hmm. And also I need to know where it's coming from. And, you know the growers practices as well so now you have chocolate like walk me through some of the the current product line that you have now okay so a lot of products you ready okay here, okay, we, here go. we go i have a vanilla uh-huh and i have a chocolate and that's it <laughs> <laughs> that's it for now because you know one one is no strawberry no strawberry I feel like yet yeah there's usually a strawberry but if you've tasted <laughs> strawberry plant-based protein yeah it's not good. Yes, but I. But actually, maybe here you'll find the magic ingredient. Uh, well, yesterday, to make strawberries yesterday better. I did speak to someone who said, you know what? I think we could create a product or actual um, a flavor that mm -hmm. some of your audience might enjoy. So I said, you know what? Maybe we can do that. So do you see flavor extensions in actually, the future? At least, at least one, maybe a very unique flavor. Like biscotti. That'd be interesting. See? That'd be interesting. I don't know if I like that. I'm not, I'm not sure if I've, you know, Have tasted Have you eaten that biscotti? My diet is pretty <laughs> restrictive, so I haven't, but you hey, would, if my customers You wouldn't know biscotti asking, if you tasted one. Or if it hit me in the head. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> but if some of our customers started requesting some of these flavors, I will most definitely look into them as well. Okay, okay. So you're here really looking for other optimal ingredients to add in to your Absolutely. current product line. Yes, yes, okay. yes. I, I want to make sure Green Regimen is all-encompassing for our customers. They wake up in the morning. They might take some green regimen capsules, you know, it mm -hmm. could be greens powder. They have their elite protein for their meal replacement, maybe something at night for, for sleep. So I'm always looking to just improve the overall level of health of our customers. How did you prepare for the show? What's your game plan? I've never prepared for anything. I think more <laughs> than I prepared for this show. Oh, really? Oh, absolutely. So you did prepare? Oh, yeah. Some okay. might think I overprepared, but I'm really, really happy that I did. I wrote okay. down all of do you have meetings and stuff? I, I've had meetings ever since I landed yesterday. Wow. So it's been phenomenal. I'm okay. like so excited to share all, of, and I'll be able to share with our audience based on the wonderful products that we release. But it's been jam-packed. And what, um, were there any networking events that you're like definitely going to or on your schedule? Yes. There, there are some networking events, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to prioritize meeting with the suppliers here first okay. so there are network events at night but i, I really want to focus on the ingredients you know because at the network events you know people are a little bit more loose there's you know mm -hmm. other other liquids besides elite protein flowing so we need I to have to... your drink there that's a great at the idea. networking event that's a great idea you need a publicist you... i wonder if there's one <laughs> around are there any publicists <laughs> around anyone who could help out <laughs> green regimen <laughs> all right so you've got your meetings lined up um, you've got your schedule all mapped out. All mapped. Um, tell me a little bit about 
how do you promote this? Because you don't, you, we're not working together, but you're out there. So what, what do you prioritize? Who's your target audience or is, that you're finding? Where do you speak to them? So what I've learned is these days, mm -hmm. customers not only care about how delicious a product tastes, but they do want to know who's behind the product. Okay. That's something I had to learn over the years. So the way I market is, I'll make videos on social media. I will ask other educators or influencers mm -hmm. to, to share their reviews of the product and just getting it out to the masses, right? And okay. I think that's the best way. Okay. Um, our current demographic, like our customer mm -hmm. uh, demographic is men and women between the ages of 35 and 55. Okay who care about their health and are always looking to improve their health. Mm -hmm. So if that's you, come find us. Now, you helped your mom out so much. Oh, yeah. Do you find that you have like a big Green Regimen fan base of your mom's contacts and friends? <laughs> is there like a bunch of mom groupies that follow you? There, there definitely is. And the reason why I know that is because I receive emails every other <laughs> week saying, hey, you know, I love your story, uh -huh. you know, and either someone's buying it for their mom or it's a mom mm -hmm. buying it for their kids and they're just like I love the fact that you created this for your mom and, you know and that's and that's the why and I think it's really important to have a why and something I had to learn you know along the way but my why is my mom do you do social media with your mom is she I ever haven't. in there so she's you in Connecticut not? I'm in Los Angeles so I haven't done that okay but I also I had never thought of that idea. Maybe if I had a publicist, maybe. See, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a tip right now because a free tip, out of or are you gonna charge me? I'm gonna. This is free because okay. we're on okay. stage. Okay. But every single social media post that I include my mother in, my audience just goes through the roof. The likes. I'm telling you now, you gotta start telling the story of you and your mom on social. That's incredible. You're gonna like gain a whole nother level. That would be awesome. I mean, we like seeing you. But you do like push to see ups. someone else's well. But. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, push ups are push ups, right? Seeing my mom would be yeah. know, much more dynamic. I, yeah, I, I think, um, you know, I think she has a compelling story. She's awesome, too. Guys. She'd be great on camera. Yeah. Her personality is bigger than mine. She's phenomenal, so you're actually right. Yeah. She might just take over. I could sit in the back. <laughs> Maybe and that's watch what her, you're right? secretly <laughs> afraid of. <laughs> That'd be nice, right? You have a little break for a second. This industry is a little bit different from the fitness industry and the nutrition industry that you were in. When did you kind of like stumble into natural products? So the thing is, it was interesting because with natural products, I realized that nutrition is, is the key component of natural products. And me being into sports, I sort of had a cognitive dissonance, you know, maybe five years ago where I'm using these sports performance products because they're supposed to create optimal health and optimal performance. But then I'm looking at the ingredients and I'm like, these aren't optimal <laughs> ingredients. So that's when they I just decided. They look cool. They, they look very cool, <laughs> you know, scientific names, but unfortunately, just not optimal. Okay. So that's when I decided to, to make the switch and say, you know what? We're gonna use some plant-based ingredients and we're gonna make sure the quality is very high so you can really get the most performance or just general health lift. So Come you're on. you're 100 percent vegan? Yes. Okay. Yes, and when did you do that? Four years ago, actually. Okay. Four years ago, yeah. I, I did a social media challenge. Okay. Since you were speaking of social media yes. earlier, and I thought I would only do it for 30 days, and then I said, let me continue. And then six months later, I got my blood results tested, and they were unbelievable. So wow. Then I just continued and. Wow. So you yeah. just you have ditched the meat. All the way, thus far, yeah. What's been now that you're 100% vegan, because someone might look at you and go, there's no way that he's 100% vegan. Look at all that muscle on you, because that's a misconception, right? 100%. What's the biggest misconception you had about being vegan now that you are, that you're like, okay, that whatever that idea was in my head is not true? Well, that's one. Okay. That someone could that you're going to lose muscle. muscle. Yes, yes. And, you know, you can just easily, you know, take out your chicken and your, your beef mm -hmm. and just, you know, eat some salad and you'll have the same muscle tone. Not at all. It's a, it's a very strategic process. Okay. And the majority of our customers aren't vegan. And I understand. And I, I'm, I'm all about optimal health anyway. So mm -hmm. if people want to be vegan, awesome. If they want to be plant-based, fantastic. As long as they're healthy, that's all I care about. So the biggest surprise about being vegan that you're like, I really like being vegan because? And because you can actually have an optimal level of health. Blood work is fantastic. Mm -hmm. You can retain your muscle tone. And you could build more muscle. And I initially did not think that that was possible. 
then I got tired of telling myself that's not possible and I made it possible. So don't become a carbitarian. Carbit, that's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> just made that that's up. That's a new one, that's a new one. Um, you have to get on the green regimen bandwagon. It's protein. It's, it's, it's more than protein. It's more than protein. It's, it's protein, it's superfoods, it's optimal health, it's an elite lifestyle nutrition system. And it's a story. Oh. Soon to come, more on Tyshawn and Absolutely. his mom, right? 100%. Thank you so much for coming. If people want to get in touch with you, they can follow Green Regimen on Instagram. Yes. They can connect with you on LinkedIn. He's on there sometimes. I'm going to Mainly because I keep that. pulling him in. You're right, but, but I'm going to post gonna, more. He's going to boost it up. Yes, yes. yes and um, yeah, have a great show. Yeah. Thank you very much. You can't miss Tyshawn. I mean, you will run into him. So make oh, sure you There's not a lot hi. of people that look like me here? No, I'm just saying like he's always on brand. It's important. It's important. Because I live. Just look for Green Regimen. 100%. And he's very tall. That's why I can see you. All right. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right. All right, we will be back. We have one more interview. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Supply Side Fresh. We are talking to new people here that are coming to Supply Side for the very first time. We are talking about mentorship and internship. We've had a great morning as the trade show floor is just filling up now. I'm Amy Summers. I'm here to with Delisa and Zach Harper Hi. of Funky Mellow, and they are making my last interview super easy because they have Funky Mellow right on their shirt in case I forget the name. Yes. So thank you guys. Absolutely. I love this. I thank love this you. coordination. <laughs> are, are you married or something? We are, we are. So funny enough, we actually, we started the business six months into dating. We oh. didn't get married until a couple years ago. Wait, wait I know. Stop. Serious commitment. You, you started the business six months into dating. Yeah. Yes. And then when did you get married? At month seven? Basically. <laughs> no, we got married a year and a half ago. Yeah. Okay. 2021. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So you started a business before you got married. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting approach. Right? Yeah. Okay. I know. I mean, it worked out. Well, <laughs> I, it's a good test, right? Because if you can't do a business together, you definitely can't do a marriage good together. Point. True. And most people do it in the reverse. They get married, and then they start a business, and then you have you two disasters on your hand. Yes, <laughs> very much so. So, much. okay, so I want to hear the dating story. Yeah. So how did you meet? How did we meet? Well, we so... Roasting marshmallows on a campfire? That would be cute. We can change the story. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so Zach and I met, um, I guess like in 2017 it was, uh, we met through a music festival actually. Okay. And um, yeah, we, we both decided that like, well, we have a bunch of dietary restrictions is what it came down to. Cause when we were traveling for festivals, we couldn't really eat anything at the festivals. And so we were like, we just want to make something really fun and exciting. Oh wow. So marshmallows. Wait, it's so what, what what's, the, what's the, your background? Like, what were you doing before you landed in this industry? Good question. I have a marketing background. I okay. came from, like, the tech industry. Okay. Yeah. And I came from pharmaceutical sales. Pharmaceutical. Oh, yeah. this is a good combo. <laughs> yeah. The shirts are making sense now. Okay, Thank cool. You. Okay. <laughs> Pharma sales, yeah. that's... That's Way different. In, it's cut Well, I mean, that's intense. Yes. So you know how to pitch. Yes, very much. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So yeah. you met, you're going to these concerts, there's nothing to eat that's healthy. Yeah. Right. And um, you decided to just blow up the snack industry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's not forget, we also love sweets too. Oh, so that okay. was one of our inspirations. But we started with Rice Krispie treats, then okay. marshmallows, and then marshmallow cream. We always wanted to make a fluff yeah. because we really envisioned that to be like our own version of it. And we wanted to make it healthy and better for you. So that's why we started working on it. And that's why all of our stuff is made from chickpeas. Our marshmallow cream. Okay, so the website is funkymellow.com? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, they got that URL. <laughs> yeah. So funkymellow.com, go check it out. I love the website, by the way, which Thank I mean, you have a marketing background, I so know. we're already like, <laughs> so I get it now. Okay. <laughs> but for people that don't really know what Funky Mellow is or they're not on your website at this moment, can you explain what this? delightful thing is yes. that you're sure. selling <laughs> it's the best dip that you're going to have on okay. the planet right now because like i said it's marshmallows but it's reimagined because it's made from chickpeas so you okay. can dip it in fruit you can also use it as a coffee creamer replacement if you want to oh. a pancake waffle topping or just eat it it's a totally good snack by itself too just like right out of it straight out yep okay yeah. yeah what makes it really special is that it's all plant-based it is allergen friendly so there's no soy there's no dairy 
there's, I mean, it's gluten friendly, so it's anyone can enjoy okay. it, and it tastes really good. Yeah, and like, how did really you? Good. You two aren't formulators, <laughs> so <laughs> we're do you have a secret scientist in the back pocket? Like, how, how did you come up with this? <laughs> we're just big foodies. No, okay. we just we love food, and we started testing this for at least four and a half years. It seemed like too, and. Yeah. We really just had a passion because we like creating different things and I think we just got very fortunate with what we created and we love it a lot and a lot of people seem to like it too. So your friends were the test market. Very much. Always. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> friends and family. And they're still alive. So yes. It's good stuff. And they're happy. <laughs> they're healthy. <laughs> now, the name, Lisa, tell yes. me how did that come up? Ah. So the music festival, right? So that's okay. the funky. We actually, we got the music back onto our website so people can kind of jam out All to right. our tunes. Um, and the mellow, marshmallow naturally. So funky mellow, it's just, it is, it's just more, I don't know, like it There's brings, so much it brings the two it. worlds together. I yeah. have so much posting your post to pr promo this. I'm like, thank you. Yellow <laughs> mellow, like everything rhymes with mellow. I know, yes. it's so great. Yellow <laughs> mellow, and I mean, you just. And you can't like not smile when you say right. it. Like funky mellow, people like just think, even coming in today, people are like, your shirts are awesome. I was like, thank you. So yes. that's a great segue into what we do. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so this is your first Supply Side West. Yeah. And have you been to other conferences or trade shows in the industry like Expo West? Yeah. Okay, so the what is one. your first impression of Supply Side West ingredient show? I mean, I'm blown away. Um, it's very similar to me uh, as the Expo West, mm -hmm. um, but the fact that we can focus on ingredient vendors and I mean, we were even just like stopped by uh, a few co-packing vendors. <laughs> and so just like, it's it's really great to build connections on the back end okay. of you know the sourcing side. So um, Zach, like, who are you looking to connect with here? Yeah, so different ingredient vendors mm -hmm. and co-packers are really what we're looking for. Now we produce everything ourselves. Okay. Um, we have some really exciting launches coming up, so we're always on the search for different vendors, different partners, and just so we can grow appropriately. So you do the manufacturing in-house, or you? We do. do it all in-house. You do, and was that a, a choice, or because you couldn't find somebody? Both. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Both. We're the only people in the world that create marshmallow cream that's refrigerated, so there wasn't a lot of manufacturers that we could just find a list for, okay. which forced us to create our own plant. But we're always open to those partnerships, and so that's why we're, we're here today, too. Okay. So the company's been around for? Like four years. Four years. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Thank you. And you've been married for? Two. Two. <laughs> two. It's going two. great. Yeah. <laughs> that's impressive. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, what's been your, what's been the biggest surprise you've had from this company so far? Just either Ooh. from your customers or? doing the business like what's been the biggest surprise you're like I wasn't expecting that but yeah that's a good question yeah do you have I do I yeah I do. think <laughs> some of the customers and their allergen what they have as allergens really mm -hmm. surprised me we really wanted to make this a all-inclusive snack but we've got some feedback from some customers that it really does change things for them with their kids and they can enjoy marshmallows and s'mores and I didn't realize the impact that that was going to create for them so it just gives me and I think Delisa a whole new sense of purpose of why we're doing this whole thing so that's been that's been my biggest surprise yeah too. I mean I would say that definitely the fact that like so we do manufacture everything in-house right I bet no one really understands the science behind making a marshmallow <laughs> like it blew my mind and it really did take us like a lot of research and just a lot of like trial and error to really get this recipe right like We'll give you some after this interview, oh, and it is. Try to lie yeah, on I know. <laughs> <laughs> it is the fun. fluffiest, like just the the best flavor that you can ever think in a marshmallow, and we're so glad that we were able to test it and try it out. So, yeah. you two are like the real life lessons in chemistry. <laughs> you know about <laughs> the really show is. on Apple TV? I no, but I'm gonna assignment. look it up. No. Okay, book. <laughs> okay. But it just started this month. It's called Lessons in Chemistry. Okay. And it's a love story, a oh, little bit. Of course. Maybe Zach shouldn't watch it. But oh. anyways, <laughs> no, because I won't give it away. But you have to watch it. You guys are just creating this Absolutely. together. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, and it really did bring us together, even in like a, a way that I would have never expected. Yeah. Agreed. Now, yeah. are you, um, were you a big fan of marshmallow prior to developing Funky Mellow? Do you, do you like Absolutely. marshmallows? I loved marshmallows. Really? Yeah. 
How did you eat your marshmallows? How did I eat them? Yes. Several ways. Okay. <laughs> um, so when I was a kid, I would literally just eat them in my mouth. Like I wouldn't okay. need to put them on anything. Oh yeah, right on um, the bag. I also love fluffernutter sandwiches. So just like spreading, have you heard of those? No, continue. <gasps> okay, so in the Northeast is where it originated, like Boston oh, in particular. That explains it, I'm from yes. the South. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, so you just, you get white bread and you put like oh. peanut butter on it and then you put the fluff. So it's like a sweet, savory sandwich. Okay. People just snack on that or eat it for lunch or whatever okay. you want. There's no nutrition whatsoever. <laughs> and were you That's a good. marshmallow eater prior to this? Absolutely. And so how did you eat your marshmallows? S'mores and oh, then yeah. That's a good one. onions. Because were you a Boy just, Scout? Yes. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> You're just getting Wait, our so s'mores food. and... Uh, on yams, so like marshmallows oh, and yams, yams and Thanksgiving. Yeah. Thanksgiving's, Thanksgiving's coming yeah. up. That's yeah. a Thanksgiving's thing. Thanksgiving's like year-round for me a little bit. So. Can you put this stuff on your Thanksgiving yams? <laughs> yes, you can. Oh, it goes. now it's going to be healthy. Yes. yes. You can do whatever you want with it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so give us some of the more creative ideas, because I think when we think marshmallows, you yeah. instantly go to the cereals that you're not supposed to be eating, the <laughs> s'mores that you only did when you were a boy or a Girl Scout. Yeah. But can you give us some, like, adult recipe ideas yes. to use the funky yes. mellow on are you a Besides coffee yes. drinker i am not but a lot of people are so continue coffee or hot cocoa okay. put a scoop of it in there okay. and it'll sweeten it so you don't need the sugar you don't need the cream okay. and it creates a nice froth on top oh, it's amazing like you had done at starbucks or something absolutely okay. you can do it at home Look um, at that. a fruit dip yeah. is another fruit really dip. great way okay yeah yeah, that's and that's, that's actually a good segue into our dipsters, which is our newest product. Okay. Dipsters, so we create the snack pack for you. Okay. We have our marshmallow cream with like pretzels, or we're doing like dried fruit as okay. well, so you can take it on the go. And that's nice. that's our new exciting project right now. All right. And other recipe ideas, Zach, that you like? Oh yeah, so we definitely have developed thirty different flavors. Thirty. Um, <laughs> If we have a flavor, we like it, and we try to develop it ourselves. Okay. So we also make s'mores jars to go, and those are basically our own chocolate sauce with graham cracker and then our marshmallow cream, and we have different flavors of that, too. Okay. So we've got some different different ideas, fun stuff. Well, so you have 30 flavors. Yeah, it's not all online because it's too much for everyone, but <laughs> okay. we've developed them, and you know, with the seasons, we want to change some different flavors. Oh, so you're kind of like... Oh, it's pumpkin season, yeah. and do you have a it's pumpkin so flavor? Yeah. So right now we have hazelnut and vanilla chai okay. for the holiday, mm -hmm. but we also have a pumpkin spice that we'll bring out next year, too. Okay. Now, do you two have a favorite flavor? It's, it's like picking your favorite child. <laughs> like, I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> okay, top three. Um, okay. <laughs> so I, I'm in love with the vanilla chai. Uh, it okay. is so good, um, and that also, like, it's a very fall flavor, but it goes really well in coffee and hot chocolate, okay. so that's one of my favorites, but you can't go wrong with vanilla, right? which I think is his favorite. Vanilla is absolutely my yeah. favorite. It's absolutely my vanilla. favorite, but it's our base. Yeah, it's it's so basic, passion. but, like, yeah. I always, like, default to vanilla for some reason. I think it's you good. just know it's going to be it's very clean you know. yeah. mm -hmm. and just going to give you a touch of that sweet. Yes. Yeah, and like our vanilla is like really vanilla. Like we are bold with our flavors, okay. and so it goes well with other things. Yeah. You won't lose the flavor when you mix it with stuff. Yeah. So yeah, it's exciting. All right, so you're <laughs> manufacturing it on your own. Are there any ingredients that you're seeking here that you're like, I wish we could find a better fill in the blank? Yeah. yeah, I mean, since sugar and tapioca syrup are our main ingredients, we're always looking for just other vendors just okay. to see what's out there. Yeah, that, that, yeah. I, I mean, those are the main so. ones, really. Yeah, those are the main ones for us. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, like, we only have, like, five or six ingredients in our okay. um, products. So it's it really doesn't take much to, you know, source different things. It's really just being on top of the different options that are out there and making sure we keep control of our costs and our quality. And where do people buy this? Do they just buy it online, or where are you selling at right now? Yeah, you can buy it online. Mm -hmm. We're also in Whole Foods locally, where we are from Austin. I think okay. we're actually going to spread out with them in a couple of regions next year, though. Okay. We're also talking with HEB, which is a big one for us in Texas as well. That'll be big. Thank yeah. You. And they can can they buy can you buy it on Amazon? Have you gone to not the Amazon yet? yet? Amazon. <laughs> not, <laughs> yet. <laughs> not available yet. on the Amazon. Yeah. No, not but yet. Available on your website, yes. it's so on our anybody website. can really get it. Absolutely, right? yeah. yeah. We'll ship all across the country. Okay, Delisa, this question's for you. Okay. Marketing. <laughs> yes. You know what would really bring this full circle? Maybe you've already what? thought about it. Tell me. 
<laughs> how to make it available at all of these music festivals. Yes. <laughs> I mean, we've been talking about this story, forever. Right? And it brings it full circle because yes. that's where we started. Yeah. I mean, funny enough, when we first created this, we were like, we should just go on the road, like in a yes. bus and like go to these different festivals. Farmaid, like, yeah. 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 I think one day we might figure something like that out. Right now, we are really focusing on pushing retail. Okay. And then we'll do some fun projects, though, so stay tuned. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. what's, what's your favorite part of this brand story that you like to tell people? Like, you just, we meet in the elevator in the Mandalay Bay. <laughs> You're like, oh, my gosh, that's Amy Summers. We have been waiting to talk to her, and you got 30 seconds. Oh, well, Zach, we're going to make you do this. What's the pitch in 30 seconds? This is the best dip that you're going to have. It is better than anything else you'll you'll get. It's made from chickpeas, That's and big. it's marshmallow. It's just fun. It'll make you smile. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> it's good. Thank yeah. You. Made from chickpeas, usually people's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for coming. This thank was you. a great way to wrap up thank our you. Supply Side Fresh with such fresh ideas. Thank you. Funky Mellow. I can't wait to try it out. I wish I could have done it on air, but that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll tape it for social <laughs> so you can watch it there. Thank you. But you guys have a great rest of your show. Thank and you. I mean, you can't mess them. Look at these shirts. So look for the Funky <laughs> Mellow. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you for joining us. And um, hey, stick around because we got plenty of more things coming up. Um, not me though. I'm headed out to eat some Funky Mellow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs>